this documentary had me so frustrated and furious. I Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Kendra. I make all kinds of different content on this channel, including art, story times, uh, editing guides, all kinds of different things. So if you're interested in any of those things, please feel free to check out my other playlists, my other videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, all the things. And let's go ahead and get into today's video. Okay, so today I feel like ranting and I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> so if any of you are new here, you probably don't know that I am a true crime junkie and I consume all things true crime, always have. And the Casey Anthony case was one of those that was like happening. I remember it happening in real time. And I remember like following along with the updates on the news and everything like that. My mom was really entrenched in the case when it was ongoing. And it's something that I kind of like dove into as a special interest. So I've consumed pretty much every bit of content relating to this case. So when the new Peacock documentary came out, I was like, okay, my despise and hatred for Casey Anthony um, does not exceed my desire to wanna watch this, even though it's like kind of from her point of view, like defending her case and everything. It's supposed to be like, it's supposed to make her reputation better, make her look good. I was like, well, she doesn't really have much to say aside from confessing like what actually happened but you know that it's Casey Anthony like she's gonna lie she's gonna continue to lie about what happened and what she knows and the situation it's never gonna be where the truth lies even though that's the freaking title of the documentary of course I expected no less than for her to lie throughout the entire three-part documentary series and she did and that's why I was so angry and frustrated watching this documentary that I was ranting to my husband about it last night and now I'm gonna rant to you guys about it sorry if you guys don't like eating sounds or if my lipstick's messed up I really don't care I'm hungry and I want to rant so <laughs> The documentary opens with Casey like unpacking all of these photos that she has of Kaylee in all of these frames and hanging them up in this Airbnb that they rented in Florida to do this docuseries. And she's talking about, oh, these are the last things that I have of Kaylee. Like these are things that I take with me everywhere and things that are hanging up in my house at all times where I can see them, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> That's way more remorse and, and love for her child than she ever showed during the trial. Also she's wearing a tank top and I can see a very visible mandala tattoo that's very dark and before they even mentioned it in the series I was like that's a cover-up that's a cover-up of the Bella Vita tattoo that she got when Kaylee was missing I looked it up and showed my husband I was like look this is where the tattoo was right this is where the new tattoo is it's very dark and it covers the Bella Vita tattoo as part one goes on the producer or whoever's recording asks Casey what her tattoo is and it's like peonies and half a mandala supposed to signify growth and rebirth and starting over some i don't know something like that but they don't ask her about the Bella Vita tattoo in the first part they ask her later on i think in like part three if the tattoo is a cover-up and why she covered Bella Vita. she's like yeah i covered Bella Vita because it was like an f you to my family we were portraying that we had a beautiful life but it was all lie behind the scenes and what was really going on was horrible under the surface and blah 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 it wasn't like anything to do with Kaylee like not being in my life or whatever yeah but I, I caught that way before they even mentioned it in the docuseries so it goes on they're driving around to all of the places that like all the scenes around the original crime the apartment complex where she said Zanny the nanny live they go there they go to the house on Hope Springs Drive where Casey grew up they go to Universal Studios in the employee back lot and show like the building where Casey claimed that she worked at Universal Studios which she did in fact not work there and then she's talking about how she was like trying to pretend everything was normal for the 31 days that Kaylee was missing part one kind of goes over like the facts of the case that they play the 911 call with Cindy Anthony the night that she found out case or Kaylee was missing they show her going to jail they play the phone calls between 
Cindy Anthony, George Anthony, and then Casey Anthony in the jail. They've played the news report when Kaylee Anthony's body was found, all the things. And if you are new to this case and you don't know like the facts of the case or it's been a while that since you've read the facts of the case, I would highly, highly recommend a podcast called Crime Weekly. Actually, it's a podcast and a YouTube channel and it's run by one of my favorite YouTubers, Stephanie Harlow. I've been watching her true crime documentaries for years now, but she runs runs a podcast with uh, Derek Lavasser, who's a retired detective, and they do they did a seven-part series on the Casey Anthony case, and it is excellent. I literally, I've watched it twice. I listened to it once in the podcast form, and then I watched it on YouTube, because they do have stock images and photos and maps and stuff that goes with the things that they're talking about. I watched it on YouTube the second time just to get a feel for like what they were showing in the video rather than just hearing them talk. Absolutely excellent. It goes into so much detail, way more detail than any other series I've ever watched on this case. So I, if you are new to the case or you haven't watched it in a long time, I would highly recommend going and watching that. It's very long, but there's a reason why. <laughs> So the end of episode one, Casey's talking about how nobody ever asked for her side of the story. Nobody ever asked why she was lying about things, which is not true, by the way. That's pretty much all we were trying to figure out was why she was lying about where to find her daughter if she really wanted to help the police find her. The very end of it, she's like, yeah, I'm here to tell my story, like lay it out, break my silence. I'm finally ready to talk about this. In reality, the whole series is really just Casey crying about things that don't make sense like her it's like 90 percent of the documentary is just her crying and like needing a minute from the cameras and then the other half is like blaming george anthony for kaylee's disappearance which george anthony is no saint like george and cindy anthony are not the best parents but i don't think they had anything to do with kaylee's disappearance and it's pretty obvious it, based on the information around the case to piece together what i think happened to kaylee on June 16th, whenever she went missing. I'm gonna go over my case theory, but I wanna go over like what happened in part two. Part two, they start building like the case against George Anthony. They start talking about the SA allegations that Casey made against George Anthony and also Lee Anthony, her brother, which apparently there are people who say that Casey did tell them about the SA allegations before Kaylee went missing and before the trial, things like that okay that's fine but the fact that her lawyer sprung it on the jury like the last day of the jury trial makes no sense george anthony like i think he was briefed on it like maybe the day before it happened and he's like where is this coming from because there's very few people who knew about the allegations who casey had told about the allegations prior to it coming out in the jury in the jury trial but the case that jose baez made for Casey to excuse like what happened to explain like what happened that's basically what Casey was using in this documentary too like ex she was using that same defense that Kaylee drowned in the pool or that George facilitated Kaylee drowning in the pool disposed of her body she had no idea what happened to her that was her story basically she retold the story that Jose Baez said in court and then proceeded to once again blame George for the entirety of Casey's personality. The fact that she's a compulsive liar, the fact that she manipulates people, yada, yada, yada. She blames that all in her upbringing. So she's like, okay, well, I was essayed and abused by George Anthony from the ages of like five to 12, and then Lee from 12 to 15. And then she said she was R-worded by someone at a party when she was 18 and that's how she got pregnant with Kaylee and then she said that the boyfriend I forget who is what his name is I think it's like starts with a J the boyfriend she had immediately after that she told him that Kaylee was his daughter and told everyone that too she also hid her pregnancy her very obviously pregnant belly she's a pretty small petite woman very obviously pregnant and she's getting her parents to also lie to everyone saying she's not pregnant when she clearly is so again not saying Cindy and George are like the best parents. They obviously lied to a lot of people about a lot of things and then tried to cover up again what they said. Like Cindy tried to backtrack saying that her car smelled like a dead body when she brought it back to the house, blah, blah, blah. Trying to protect Casey when they know Casey is a compulsive liar. So trying to cover for her. They She makes all these allegations against George. Then she's like, 
yes my upbringing in the house it was good to tell as many lies as possible we have to make the outside world think that we're good people that we have a perfect life a perfect family perfect household lie and pretend everything's fine the more lying the better is basically what casey said and it was all george anthony's like doing now george anthony i'm pretty sure had a gambling problem and he did have a problem holding a job as far as the abuse allegations none of that is for sure it's all allegations at this point there's never been a case brought against him by casey anthony even though she claimed in the documentary that the statute of limita limitations never expires so she could i'm not really understanding why she hasn't at this point i'm not saying the allegations aren't true i mean if she did tell people prior to kaylee going missing like that does lend credibility to her case but the way that she's gone about it in this just makes me believe that it's fabricated or at least partially fabricated also i wouldn't believe a word out of casey anthony's mouth since she, literally every word she says is a lie <laughs> every other word <laughs> is a lie so they continue talking about how casey wrote to people in the jail about her essay allegations and like continuing to build the case against george anthony continued to provide supporting evidence that this essay did in fact happen over this amount of years blah 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 they do all that in part two and then they start kind of building the case against george George saying that George was possibly essaying Kaylee before her death and this is like part of their big theory at the end where they drop like this bombshell new theory where George basically killed Kaylee in order to dispose of any evidence that could possibly give him away for SAing her in the house. Also, I do want to mention that Casey alleges that George would smother her with a pillow if she tried to fight him off during these events. So they use this as a reason as to why George may have needed to cover for SAing Kaylee, saying that he also smothered Kaylee with a pillow to make her compliant, which she's three years old. In comparison to when Casey says that the abuse started at eight years old, I figure an eight-year-old would be much less likely to to comply than a three-year-old but at the end they claim that's why george ended up faking her death was because he accidentally smothered her to death during an essay event that's basically what their story is where the truth lies at the very end but what really irritated me was when casey talks about how she always told the truth about not knowing what happened to kaylee she still doesn't know apparently allegedly what happened to kaylee also she says it haunts her every day that she's still having to defend herself over the fact that she didn't kill her daughter and that she never gets a good night's sleep anymore as if we were all just gonna forget the interview that she did like five years ago when she claimed that she slept pretty well at night and she didn't care what other people thought about her. So she said that the entire time that Kaylee was missing she assumed that she was safe and alive at the time but then she turns around and says she knew that George Anthony had brought her to Casey sopping wet as if she had had an accident like an accidental drowning in the pool and George Anthony says look what you did this is all your fault I'm kind of getting getting ahead of myself so she's claiming that the day Kaylee went missing June 16th that she was at the house with George Anthony and she claims that she didn't like being alone in the house with George because of the alleged SA abuse past and she was wanting to protect Kaylee from any like possible SA interactions with George too. She said but regardless of that she fell asleep with Kaylee in the bed while George was home. They were the only people in the house. George claims that what happened is Casey said that she still worked at Universal Studios. She did not. She did not in fact have a job. She was in fact stealing money from everyone around her to support her lifestyle and make it look like she had a job. She claimed that she had to work that day. So she said that Kaylee was going to go to the nanny, Zany the nanny, and she was going to go to work. So she left the house before George left the house, drove around, made a bunch of phone calls, and then went back to the house after she knew George had left for work. That's actually what happened based on her cell phone pings, based on the actual facts and evidence of the case. But this is what Casey says. Casey says that she didn't feel good that day. She had gotten up and made Kaylee breakfast, gotten her ready for the day. She mentions nothing about having to work that day, by the way. George was in the house watching TV, whatever. George claims that he is actually the one that 
gave Kaylee breakfast that morning, gave her a bath, got her dressed and ready for the day that day because Casey was laying in bed, making Facebook posts and messaging other people and laying in bed and blah, 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 not waking up until later in the day, which is actually cooperated by her Facebook messages, by the way. So she could not have been sleeping during this time because there's actual Facebook correspondences between her and friends during the time that she says she was sleeping when Kaylee gets up and then George has this accident in the pool or whatever. So she claims that she falls asleep. When she wakes up, Kaylee's not in the bed with her anymore. So she gets up, she goes outside. George comes rushing up to her with Kaylee's sopping wet body saying, look what you did. This is all your fault. You weren't watching her. You fell asleep. Now there's, you know, this has happened. And he doesn't explain like what has happened. Like she just kind of jumps to the conclusion that she drowned in the pool. But she says, she claims she knows that the ladder was not on the pool. So she doesn't think that it's possible for Kaylee to have climbed the ladder herself and gotten in the pool and drowned and had an accident. I don't know why she thinks that she drowned at this point when she knows the ladder isn't on the pool. Anyway, allegedly, once George realizes how upset Casey is that Kaylee is unconscious and sopping wet in, in George's arms, George like turns around and he's like, okay, I'm so sorry. Like, everything's gonna be okay, she's gonna be fine, blah, 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 like trying to comfort Casey. And then takes Kaylee out of the room to the back room out the door and leaves with her. And Casey doesn't do anything. She's just a horrible mess, crying, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't see Kaylee again for 31 days after this. Why did she not call 911 if she really thought it was a drowning accident at this time? This doesn't make any sense. She's claiming that because George said she was okay, even though the last time she saw Kaylee, she was wet and unconscious, not breathing, looking like she drowned in the pool. She just takes George's word for it that Kaylee's fine somewhere else. Like this, none of this makes any sense. Allegedly after this, George tells Casey to act normal, go out, do your business as normal, talk to your friends as normal, and I'm gonna hold Kaylee over your head to get you to do what I want. Be at my beck and call whenever I need you, whenever I call you, whenever I text you, I'm gonna let you see her, but then actually, whenever I tell you that, I'm not gonna let you see her, I'm just gonna tell you everything's fine, she's fine, blah, blah, blah. So apparently Casey thinks that George got Kaylee medical care and she's just, he's just keeping her away from Casey at this point for whatever reason. I have no idea. None of it makes any sense. And if she really thought George was abusing her, why would she let this go on for so long? Like, you would think at some point during the 31 days that she would have said something to the police. Because if she claims that George did all of this and facilitated Kaylee's disappearance and death, why would she get in trouble for calling the police? Well, how does she benefit from keeping this from the police for so long if this is all George's fault? And you would think that her daughter's safety would trump any possible punishment that she could get from telling the police what actually happened because if she was really concerned about George assaulting Kaylee then why would she allow her to be alone with him in some unknown location for 31 days it makes absolutely no sense if it were me I think the logical assumption would be that my daughter would not be safe with my abuser especially not after the last time I saw her she was unconscious and sopping wet looking like she just drowned so no I don't think I would take George at his word that Kaylee was fine especially not after the past that she accused him of having. So this whole time Casey's taking George's word for it even though she can't actually see her daughter physically that Kaylee's fine and as Casey says protecting her abuser which again makes zero sense. I'm not gonna pretend that I know how she could have felt as an SA victim. I don't know. I'm just saying none of this logically makes any sense. She's crying and she in the interview and she's like I wasn't the only person there at the house that day like George could have called 911 too. Casey, come on. This is your daughter who you just, who apparently, supposedly, you've just witnessed drown in the pool. You see her lifeless body sopping wet and you decide not to call the police because George Anthony said everything's going to be okay. And you don't see her for 31 days and you just take him at his word if he's your abuser. Like, I'm so confused at, at what... I don't know. Then she tells the police that she's been taking other routes and avenues to find her. Apparently she says that the story that she fabricated to the police was all George's doing. He basically told her to say these things and tell the police exactly what you told your mom and lie for me, <laughs> basically. So then she turns around and she's like, okay, so the, here's what I think has happened. This is part three. Here's what I think has happened. She's sitting with her like current employer who she's been with for like 10 years and he believes her story, blah, blah, blah. There's only maybe one dissent 
haunting voice in this entire documentary and they try to discredit him by saying well didn't sort George and Cindy Anthony also lie to you lie to the police yes of course they did but that doesn't discredit all of the evidence that we have against Casey Anthony. Anyway, that also made me very upset. So she says in Casey's mind, this is her theory, and her employer agrees with this, that George was essaying Kaylee the same way that she was essaying Casey, except Kaylee was much younger than Casey claimed she was when the essay abuse started. She thinks that George, in order to cover up for any evidence that may have revealed him as a Kaylee, uh, faked a drowning accident in the pool because the ladder wasn't up. So he would have had to put her in the pool and basically keep her under the water until she died. And then bring her to Casey and say, this is your fault. You fell asleep. You weren't watching her, blah, blah, blah. Even though he would probably know that the ladder, the ladder wasn't up and Casey would probably know that the ladder wasn't up. Then he would have had to in the like 10 or 15 minutes before he was supposed to be at work, wrap her body up, dispose of it in the woods, drive to work. He had an alibi, by the way. He went to work this day and there's like footage and like other people cooperating that he was at work at a specific time that day. Casey says he could have done this. He could have, you know, driven around and dumped her body and still made it to work on time not the case. If you watch the seven part series that Derek Lavasser and Stephanie Harlow did, they go over a very strict timeline of how long it took George Anthony to drive to work. I think he had a, an issue with being chronically late at his previous job. This was a brand new job, like his first day on the job. So he wanted to be early there and there's actual like cooperating evidence that he was at work early and they know exactly where it was and everything. But Casey's saying that because they never subpoenaed George's phone records and his like location pings on the cell phone towers, that it's a cover up and that he could have actually gone past the dump site on his way to work. It makes no sense. Also, this theory ignores a bunch of evidence that when you look at it, it points to Casey being guilty. If George was in fact the one who did this, then why would Casey's trunk smell like a dead body and have a whole bunch of evidence of Kaylee's body being in the trunk if he didn't take Casey's car to dispose of Kaylee's body and just went to work in his own car, then why would her car smell like that? Also, if she claims that he's the one that made these searches under her username and password on the computer, how would he have made it to work at 3 o'clock if he was making searches at 2.52 and 2.53 and his workplace was 10 minutes away? Also, Casey claims that this accident happened in the morning, like around 9 o'clock in the morning. And if that's the case, then why would George be making searches for chloroform and foolproof suffocation at 2.52 and 2.53 if Kaylee was already dead? Why would he need to make those searches if he'd already killed her earlier that morning? Like, none of it makes any sense when you look at the actual evidence. So here's what I think happened because the evidence doesn't lie and you should use the evidence that you have to point you in the direction of a hypothesis not I think this is what happened and I'm going to pick and choose what evidence I think cooperates this theory that's not how it works you have to use all of the evidence you have and if one piece of evidence goes against a theory that theory's out okay that's how detective work works <laughs> here's what I think happened I think if it was an accidental drowning or if Casey even had the suspicion that it was, I think she would have called the cops. I think she would have called 911 because how easy would it have been for the cops to write this off as an accidental drowning that happens like a bunch of times in Florida every single year so that Casey could get out of her parental responsibility and not have to deal with Kaylee anymore. It would have been easy to to do that. But instead, she makes up this whole lie about Zany the Nanny and working at Orlando Studios. Zany the Nanny was a well-used lie that Casey even admits in the documentary to have used before Kaylee's disappearance. So it's where she told George that Kaylee was going to be that day. So of course she had to keep that lie going and basically continue to tell the same story that she had told everyone for years and even told George the day that Kaylee went missing. It wasn't that George was telling her to say this lie over and over again. This is what she had caught herself in. Also, George was a retired police officer, so you would think that if he had told Casey to lie and make up a story, or if he had made up a story for her, he would have made up something much less obviously false. Obviously evidence that she didn't work at Orlando Studios. There was evidence that nobody lived at the apartment where she 
claimed Zany the Nanny lived, I don't think he would have given her a story that was so easily disprovable, especially knowing that the police were going to look into everything. Also, if Casey was the one dictating his alibi and basically protecting him against the truth, you would think that he would make sure it was bulletproof for his sake. And all these people are involved and she's catching herself in more and more and more lies and not remembering what she lied about the first time and just completely obliterating her case. So I think what happened was something happened to Kaylee on June 16th at the house that Casey couldn't write off as an accident. It was something that maybe she did intentionally or unintentionally that resulted in, in Kaylee's death in a way that she could not make look accidental. Otherwise, I think she would have called 911 and just written it off as an accidental death and boom, done, gone. So I think what happened was, here's what the evidence points to. She drove around with Kaylee pretending to go to work and pretending to drop Kaylee off with the nanny while George was at home preparing to leave for work. Once Casey knew that George had left for work, because she called him on the phone like trying to verify whether or not he was home there are phone records of that she goes back to the house she's on the computer this is when the search for foolproof suffocation under casey's username and password happens which she claims george had her password and could have searched under her name george wasn't even home at the time we know that does all the the erroneous searches for you know like chloroform and foolproof suffocation things like that something happens to kaylee either intentionally or unintentionally like maybe she gives her too much sleeping medicine maybe Maybe she strangles her, gets upset with her, hurts her in some way. Either Kaylee's dead or she's unconscious at this point. She thinks that, Casey thinks that like she's gone. So what happens is she puts Kaylee's body in the trunk and goes over to Tony, Tony Lazaro's house. I think that's who she was dating at the time. She stays the night at Tony's house that night trying to formulate a plan. She goes in there without Kaylee. They're like, hey, where's Kaylee? She's like, oh, she's with the nanny. She's going to stay the night, blah, blah, blah. She's acting fine. The next day, there's footage of Casey going back to the house at Hope Springs Drive, backing her car into the garage and closing the garage. So I think what, what happened was that was when she wraps Kaylee's body up in the trash bag in the hamper and the blanket duct, tape, duct tapes her and then puts her back in the trunk and she's like goes back out and she's trying to scope for places to dump her body but she realizes that her phone is on and pinging her location because there's pings of Casey driving around the neighborhood so she realizes her mistake she's like okay I can't do this today there's evidence of me being here so she goes back to Tony's house with Kaylee's body wrapped up at this point still in the trunk the next day she once again backs up into the garage at the, Hope, the house on Hope Springs Drive, closes the garage. She goes over to the neighbor's house and asks for a shovel. At this point, she takes Kaylee's body, she puts it in the playhouse because that's the, do the scent dogs hit on the playhouse, there being a dead body there. Puts her there, she starts digging in the backyard. There was a hole in the backyard where she was digging. She claims she was digging up a stump in the backyard. She realizes that disposing of Kaylee's body in the backyard isn't going to work. The ground's too hard. It's too much work for her. She doesn't want to put in, she doesn't want to break a sweat doing this, right? She returns the shovel like an hour later. She's not even dirty, the neighbor says. Gets Kaylee's body back in the trunk, remembers to turn her phone off this time, drives to the dump site, dumps Kaylee's body, comes back home, turns her phone back on. There was all kinds of evidence you can see in her phone records who she calls, when her phone is on, when her phone is off. That also aligns with Kaylee's body being in the trunk for about two and a half days, which is what the forensics people said based on the smell and the level of decomposition in the trunk. So that's my theory. And that's all the evidence pointing to that theory being correct. Yet Casey is still trying to profit from her lying about what actually happened. This is what makes me so angry about this is she's still trying to lie and deceive people and trying to improve her reputation almost 10 years after the fact and making a profit from it now. She acted more distraught about seeing Kaylee's old photos in this documentary than she ever once did sitting in jail or during the time she was missing or during the trial or anything. She's talking about on the phone in jail, like, why would I sit around crying? Like, I have to, like, talk to people. I have to talk to detectives. I have to help you guys find her. And she's, like, sitting, like, fake crocodile tears looking at Kaylee's old photos. Like, this documentary had me so frustrated and furious. I honestly, like, I understand the point of it was to, like, improve her reputation and, like, tell her side or whatever, but I really, really wish that somebody was, like, sitting across from her just fact-checking her at every turn. I wish somebody had been like, wait, 
um what about this evidence like you say that but that couldn't have been true because what about this oh my god i wish somebody would have been doing that the entire time because really this was three episodes of casey fake crying and blaming george for everything <laughs> anyway that's my frustrated rant about the casey anthony documentary on peacock i really don't recommend you watch it because you're just giving more money to them i just couldn't stop myself from watching it because i've consumed everything about this case and i've basically given you the synopsis anyway so you're welcome you don't have to watch it it's really bad it's really dramatic in a bad way like it's just it's just not good i don't like the production style of it i don't like the fact that they only had one dissenting voice in the entire interview cast and then they tried to discredit him and then they tried to get her friends to flip in the direction of believing casey and uh, it, the whole thing was a mess and i really disliked it even maybe more so than i dislike casey anthony because i really don't think you understand my like my level of dislike for this woman it's out of this world but anyway those are my thoughts let me know down in the comments below if you've watched this before you see this video of me talking about it what you have to think about the documentary if you've seen it already what you have to think about it if you're not going to watch it now because i've given you the synopsis what you think about this case have you been as invested in it as i have been over the years or if this is this something that you're just now kind of digging into and you know maybe you're revisiting it and you didn't really know that much to begin with let me know in the comments make sure you give this video a like share if you want to share it um, check out my other playlist on my channel and i hope you guys have a great day thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye